Welcome back for week two of our maintenance crash course. And today we're gonna to be focusing on the brakes of your bike. Not only taking a look at how they work, but also how you can change your brake pads as well. Because after all, being able to brake safely on your bike, well, it's a crucial part of staying safe, isn't it? Almost every bike will have two brakes, a front brake and a rear brake, unless your bike's a fixie, and then it might have just the brake on the front. And especially in the UK and most places around the world, it's a legal requirement to have two working brakes, one on each wheel. Your brakes could be rim brakes like this, or you could have a disc brake bike, and they'll be operated via a cable or a hydraulic system as well. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on this rim brake bike, and then we'll take a look at a disc brake bike later on. And there is loads of helpful information in section three of our road bike maintenance book. And all of that information is on page 109 through to a page 150. But first up, let's take a closer look at how our brakes work. Well, luckily, both rim brake bikes and disc brake bikes work using incredibly similar principles. You've got a rotating surface, so on our rim brake bike here, we've got this brake surface on the outer edge of the rim, and on a disc brake bike, you've got that disc brake rotor sat in the central part of the wheel. And then you've got a caliper. These are on a fixed position on the bike. So at the front, you've got a caliper here on the forks, and on a disc brake bike, the caliper we tuck down at the bottom of the forks. On the rear of the bike, we've got a rim brake caliper here, and a disc brake caliper we'd be tucked at the back of the chainstay. Now crucially, these are in a fixed position. The calipers house what are known as brake pads. These contain a special material designed to touch against our braking surface and reduce the rotational speed of those components to help slow our bikes down. It's the force or the amount of pressure that the brake pad puts onto this rotating surface which designates how much it slows down the wheel. And we're in total control of that using our brake levers here at the front of the bike. And we just simply pull the lever and depending on how much force we put through the lever, that is then transferred through either a cable or a hydraulic system, depending on if you've got rim or disc brakes, to your caliper, which then forces the brake pads onto that rotating surface and then will slow your wheel down. Rim brake pads and disc brake pads are made from incredibly different materials, but luckily there's absolutely no way of mixing these up because they are very different designs. Our rim brake pads are made from a special material designed to be hard wearing, work in all conditions, and crucially not wear down this delicate braking surface. Okay, so let's take a look at how to change our rim brake pads. Luckily, it's actually a fairly simple job, and to help us along the way, we can take a look at page 112 in the Road Bike Maintenance book, just to help us along the way and make things a little bit easier because there's plenty of detail in the steps as we go. There are a few tools you're gonna to need for this job. You're gonna need a two mil Allen key, a flat-headed screwdriver, and an old cloth just so we can wipe out any old grit and grime that we can get as we take these brake pads out. Oh, and you're gonna need your new brake pads too. So keep those to hand so they're nice and easy to get to. First job, we're gonna remove our front wheel from the bike. This isn't crucial, but it makes it a little bit easier to gain access to the brake pads and just see what's going on. But once you get good at this, you can probably do it with leaving the front wheel in. We remove our wheel, tuck that down. We'll just sit that to one side for now. Then we can take our two millimeter Allen key and we've got these tiny little grub screws on almost all brake calipers and pads like this. So what we need to do is just carefully undo these two millimeter grub screws. And this is one of the reasons why it's all it pays off to have some good quality Allen keys because these will be a nice fit into these because sometimes they can be a little bit corroded and a bit tricky to get undone. So thankfully, these will come undone nicely. We don't need to remove these all the way out of the bike. We can just unscrew them a good few turns so that they're out of the way on the inside of the brake pad because these are what stop the brake pad from sliding out. Now that we've got those little grub screws nice and loose, we can take our flat-headed screwdriver and then you can guide the pad out by pushing it like this. Sometimes the pads are loose enough that you can just push them out with your hands, but those of them that have been in there for some time and are a little bit tricky to get out, you can just use the flat-headed screwdriver to guide these out. Just be careful of your hands in case you slip. And also, 
Be careful of your frame. After all, this will scratch the paint very easily. So just take your time. And we can guide them out like such, like this. Guide them out. Once it's pushed most of the way out, you can get the pad from the back with your hands and then slide that all the way out. And there is our brake pad removed. So we can just tuck that to the side. And then it's incredibly simple to do the same process for the pad on the other side. Just guide it out. Sometimes they'll just slide out and rock it across the other side of the room, but chances are there's a fair bit of grit and grime stopping them from sliding straight out. And there's the other one. And you can see here, we've got this small little groove. I'll just show you that with a screwdriver. And that is where that little grub screw locates inside when you screw it in to stop your brake pad just sliding out. Now that we've got those removed, this is why we needed our old cloth, because you can now slide that into that gap and clean out some of that old grit and grime that builds up over time, especially over winter when all the water and grit is continually going into there. And this is the stage when you'd get your nice shiny new brake pads and guide them straight into place, very same process as how you remove them. But take note of your brake pads because they are sided, so they've got an L and an R on them to make sure they go in the right side because, I'll show you here, they've actually got a very slight curve to them and that's to make sure they're a perfect match with the diameter of the wheel. These ones actually have left and right written on them rather than just the individual letters. So I can actually put my original brake pads back into place, making sure not to mix up the sides of them. And these are, so this one's the right hand side. So again, from the back, I can slide it in. And if you find it's a bit tricky to get the brake pad to go and line up into the caliper, you can just pull the lever and then that will push the caliper closer together and it might make it a little bit easier to guide this brake pad in. So fairly simple, guide that in nice and easily and give it a good firm push to make sure it's inserted all the way into that caliper and the pad housing. And we do the same for the other side. Again, if it's a little bit tricky to get lined up, you can just pull the brake lever to pull the caliper into the center, then guide that in, give it a good firm push to make sure that that's seated in there nicely. Then we can take our two millimeter Allen key again and just do these little grub screws up. You can use the ball end of the Allen key until they go tight. So through there, find a bit of resistance. Then we can take the small end here, guide that in there. And then there's no need to do these up too tight. Just enough to nip them up and hold them in place. Um, if they had a torque set in, it would be incredibly low. So one or two Newton meters. And same again for this side. Allen key back in, just nip that up, just like so. And if you want to be sort of really helpful and set yourself up from the future, you could just remove these little grub screws, put a little bit of a dot of grease on them and put them back in. And then hopefully the next time you come to change your brake pads, you won't find that those little grub screws are seized in place because sometimes that can happen. And it's a bit of an annoying process if you find that the bolt rounds out. So those would be your new brake pads fitted in. All that remains now is to quite simply refit our front wheel. And just pop that in there. Do that up. And that is a working brake. Now if you fitted new brake pads, they're gonna have a little bit more material than what your old ones had on them. So chances are, over time, you would have wound this little barrel adjuster out to account for the fact that that brake pad material has worn away. So if now with your new brake pads in, you find that your brake lever just doesn't have much travel at all, you might just have to wind this barrel adjuster back in to loosen the caliper off slightly. And then that, you should find, look at that, lovely. Nice, nice bit of lever travel, perfectly working brakes. And for the rear of the bike, it's exactly the same process. So you can just remove the back wheel from your bike, use your two millimeter Allen key, take the grub screws out or just back them off a little bit, slide your pads out, insert your new ones, and away you go. Right then, on to our disc brake bike. As you can see, I've already got the wheels removed from our bike. And for a little bit of additional help and guidance as we change our disc brake pads, you can refer to page 134 in our essential road bike maintenance book. God, that's good, isn't it? And a few little tools that we're gonna need for this job. We're gonna need our long nose pliers, our little flat-headed screwdriver, so quite a small one here. And then to help us even further, we can use a plastic or nylon tire lever. And you can use something, anything along the lines of this, really, just as long as it's plastic and not gonna risk scratching or damaging any components. Perfect. 
Right, our first step that we're going to need to is to use our long nose pliers. And that is to remove this small little retaining safety clip that is on the end of our disc brake pad pin. This is a small little clip that we need to make sure we don't lose. It quite easily can ping off the end of this, so that's why you use your long nose pliers and it will save you rummaging around on the floor trying to look for it and tuck that to one side to keep that safe. Having removed that, we need to take our small flat-headed screwdriver, so quite a small one this one, but a tool that most of us will have lying around, and then we can undo this brake pad retaining pin. Um, sometimes there'll be a small Allen key, but this one on here is a small flat-headed screwdriver. So we can guide that into there, and holding it steady, we can undo that. It shouldn't be too tight, so that's got a bit of a thread on it. So you undo that. And then it should be quite easy just to guide that out through the brake pads like so. So you can see that there. And again, tuck that nice and safe with that little safety clip that goes on to the end. Now at this stage, we can take our nylon tyre lever, and this is the perfect tool for the job, because it's nice and easy and we've all got these lying around. And we can guide this in between where the brake pads are and just use it to push the pads and then push the pistons back into the caliper. And the reason we're doing this is to create space so that when we put our new brake pads in, because they have a little bit more material on them, it means that we've got then space for the disc rotor to sit back in place when we reassemble all the bike. So we can just do this as so, guide it in there, and just push, wiggle it left and right, taking your time just to ease those pistons back into the caliper nice and steady there's no need to apply excessive force and you can do this right at the very start of the process if you wanted to but either way we're achieving the same results so that is that done and even just looking at that now I can see how much of a bigger gap there is in there so now we've done that our brake pads are ready to be removed from the caliper to do this I can take them out from the back of the caliper that's quite a crucial process and is the same for nearly all calipers I can possibly think of, that, well, disc brake calipers anyway. So we can just pinch each pad with our fingers and in between it will close that little spring up. Just pull them out, hold them together nice and securely and then we can just guide them out, give them a little wiggle to help get them out. And there we have, we can see we've got our pads and the retaining spring that's in there out in one piece. If I let go of this, it would just fall apart but I can keep them held together like that. And you can see on the side here, we've got a left and we've got a right pad. And that'll be the same on the new pads that you're going to fit in. Obviously, I'm not going to be replacing these ones because they've got plenty of brake pad material left on them. So as I take this apart, you can see we've got one of our brake pads here. And then here, we've got a little spring that sits in between and helps hold the pads away from the rotor when it's sat in the caliper. Chances are nearly all disc brake pads, when you buy new ones, come with a new one of these little springs. But if they don't, for any sort of reason, you can reuse these again. There's no, no harm in reusing that, so there's no problem whatsoever. So we can sit those to one side. And then we can just have a little look, and we can see, yeah, that all looks fine in there, because whilst we've got the pads out, we can have a look to make sure there's no sort of damage or oil seeping out of the seals in the caliper, and that all looks to be okay. There's also, if you need to push the pistons back into the caliper any further, here's a good time that you can still do it using your nylon tire lever like so if you wanted to do that. But as I said, we've already got these pushed back in nicely. So that is perfect. So this would be when you would take your new brake pads. Obviously, we're using these original ones here. And it's just a case of sliding this spring over one side like that. Um, slot the other brake pad over the top of the spring making sure that it's sat correctly. Then we can pinch them together, and then these are ready to go straight back into our caliper. Hold them together nice and securely, and then slide the brake pads in as we do it, making sure to push them in equally. Give them a little wiggle as you're doing so, that will help them settle in. Push them firmly in so we can tell that they're nice and securely in place. That's fine. We can see that the spring is in place as well, and that it's pushing the pads back up to the caliper, perfect. Next step, we can get our pad retaining pin that we know, nice, tucked away nice and securely. That will go through our hole here, 
And if you find in there's a little bit of resistance and it doesn't quite want to go through, you can just look through and chances are it will just be that little spring that needs moving. So we can use our little flat headed screwdriver just to move any of these components around slightly to make sure we can get the pin to guide through. So it should be a fairly simple process. There should be no real force that's needed to apply here. Then nice and easily screw that back into place. And again, this is a component on your bike that doesn't need to be done up super tight. It's quite a small sort of retaining pin and the thread's quite delicate on it. So just do it up, nip it up enough to hold it in place. A couple of newton meters or so, that'll be okay. Then we can get our little safety clip here that goes on the end of that retaining pin and guide that over. As I said earlier, be careful here because it's a bit tricky and if you drop it, it's such a pain hunting around looking for that. So that is the reversal of the removal process. And we can see they're sat in there nicely. The pin's in there, that's done up. The safety clip is on the end to make sure there's no risk of that pin coming out. And therefore, the pads can't come out. All that we need to do now is to refit the wheels onto the bike. And it might just take a couple of pulls of that brake lever just to get the pistons and the pads to settle in and they will self-adjust. And then you should have a perfectly working brake. So there you have it, how your brakes work and how to change the brake pads on a disc brake bike and on a rim brake bike. I hope you found this video helpful and you enjoyed week two of our maintenance crash course. And why not let me know in the comments section down below whether you find it easiest to change disc brake pads or rim brake pads. Anyway, I'll see you next week for week three. See ya.